Alright gamers, Intel recently released the latest final fix, the 0x12p microcode update, which claiming to tackle degradation issues with their 13th and 14th gen CPUs. At the same time, a lot of reports show that CPUs are still at risk, with some users are even experiencing high attempts, worse performance after the update and needing to request an RMA. If you want to keep your CPU safe or are noticing problems after the BIOS update, don't worry, I'll walk you through how to protect your CPU and avoid any long-term damage. Don't blindly trust Intel's official settings. Set all the limits yourself. I'll show you how and explain it in detail. At this point I would recommend not skipping or fast-forwarding through the video, as I will go over the issue in depth, show data from my computer and share insights from a former Intel engineer who kindly agreed to provide information after the latest round of layoffs. All settings will be applied in line with internal specifications, which I will also show. These settings won't harm your PC. The goal of this video is to secure your PC and CPU against degradation as much as possible and to apply a small underworld while keeping Intel default settings and CEP enabled. I won't go too deep technically, but I will try to explain each point clearly. So, the most surprising and terrible thing here is that Intel still hasn't fully solved the problem. They don't collaborate enough with motherboard manufacturers and don't discuss their solutions adequately. As a result, even Intel default settings can vary for each motherboard and remain unsafe. The main issue was that the voltage for processors was increased during the idle or low load moments, resulting in sudden spikes that can be seen without an oscilloscope. The issue here is that Intel tried to fix this by raising some baseline voltage settings, so that even degraded or lower quality CPUs could remain stable. Let's get to the fundamental question. What settings on your motherboard pose a risk to your processor? Obviously, the settings are related to voltage, but they aren't limited to just voltage caps. As I mentioned earlier, voltage can have sharp spikes, and final voltage is also affected by AC-DC load light settings, which we will adjust today. The primary danger lies in the high value of AC load line with Intel default settings. This value is set to 0.9 milliohms and even 1.1 milliohms in some BIOS versions, which is too much. This was done to keep already degraded or lower quality CPUs running without issues. But the price of this is higher vCore voltage on the processor up to 1.5-1.6 volts, which in turn speeds up your CPU degradation. Our goal is to get value below 1.4 volts in hardware info, and even for 14900K this should be more than enough if load light calibration is properly configured. So, to start, I highly recommend updating to the latest BIOS version, with microcode 0x12p, as previous versions didn't always correctly apply limits when Intel default settings were disabled and sometimes not even with them enabled. For testing and monitoring, we will need two free programs, OCCT and Hardware Info. At the moment, for demonstration purposes, I have Intel default settings on my computer. In OCCT, we can see that the AC load line value is set to 0.9 milliohms, which is quite high and leads to significant heating of the processor and unfortunately lower performance. Unfortunately, hardware info doesn't show voltage spikes, but we will see them a bit later on an oscilloscope. And for now, the values we see should be suffice, and the limits with undervolt we apply will be safe even with these voltage spikes. In hardware info, only two fields are essential for us now, vCore and Core VIDs. Now that we are set with monitoring, let's go directly to the BIOS settings. I'll show you how to do this for three main motherboard manufacturers. Gigabyte, Asus and MSI. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a computer with ASRock or other brands, but I think the settings will be similar. I almost forgot to add the oscilloscope test. On the screen, you can see values close to 1.6 volts. These are Intel default settings with CEP enabled. This clearly proves that manual limiting the voltage and adjusting other BIOS settings is essential as the current default settings simply aren't safe for the CPU. So, we are in BIOS. First enable the XMP profile, then resizable bar for NVIDIA graphic cards. Now let's go to the advanced settings menu on our motherboard. 
I'll show you the record on how I do this on a Gigabyte motherboard. On the right you can see the options to select for ASUS and MSI. Next go to the tweaker tab. Then down to advanced voltage settings. Here we will set the voltage limits first to be safe from degradation and voltage spikes on the processor. Then go to CPU VRM settings. For now don't touch anything here and go to the internal VR control settings. Here we see IA VR config. Set it to enable and a lot of additional settings will appear. Don't panic, we will go through them now. There are two key settings here. Look for IA VR voltage limit field and limit the maximum voltage. My recommendation is to set this value to 1400 millivolt to be safe for sure. Believe me, this is more than enough for processors that have not degraded and are acceptable silicon quality. Next, go to the IAAC load line field and set it to 5055. The lower the better, but this value should work for most processors and motherboards. For MSI and ASUS values, see the details on the right. Leave IA DC load line unchanged, doesn't impact the limit and is for finer tuning. Good job, the most critical part is done. Next, I recommend manually setting additional limits according to the official specification for your processor. For this, go to Advanced CPU settings. Most settings here are not adjustable and will be overridden by Intel default settings. So go straight down to the Turbo Power limits and set it to Enable. Once again, a lot of settings will appear. You only need a couple. On the screen, you can now see the official power limit specifications for Intel processors. Feel free to pause the video and set the values according to your processor model. In my case, I have 13600K processor. I'll set package power limit 1 and package power limit 2 to 180 watt and ICC max to 200 amperes. I recommend settings ICC max to 307 amperes for all K series processors. How it would look for ASUS and MSI motherboards is shown on the right. The main part of the work is done, and if you watched this far, I want to show you a bonus section. Easy mode undervolting for your processor. Exit to the main menu by pressing escape button, then go to advanced voltage settings again. For MSI, go to overclocking and follow the text instruction on the screen. Look for CPU internal AC DC load line and set it to power saving. This will do everything needed for a simple undervolt. You can also change CPU load light calibration to high if you see performance drops in tests, but in my in my case everything works in auto mode. This may happen because we decided to keep Intel default settings and CEP enabled this time. That's it, don't forget to save the settings and restart into Windows. Now your CPU is safe, we limited the voltage, controlled possible voltage spikes and stabilized the system. It's time to check our results. As you can see, temperatures have dropped and performance is approximately the same. These are very good results and for most users they can remain unchanged with a stable system to continue using. For those who want more and wish to see a more detailed and in-depth guide on CPU undervolting, temperature optimization, AC DC load line adjustment and the principles behind their operation, I'm already working on that video. If this is interesting for you, don't forget to let me know in the comments, give a like if you are enjoying the video and of course subscribe to the channel so you won't miss this in-depth guide. These settings will be sufficient for most users and will protect your computer and CPU from degradation. However, if you want to reduce the CPU voltage even further and lower temperatures while keeping Intel default settings and CEP enabled, I will definitely show you how to do this in the next video. Additionally, there will be a final video where I will share the settings I use myself, which include fine-tuning the system. I look forward to share these principles with you.